<laughs> the problem is very simple. The problem is that we're looking at the world through the wrong lenses. We think that we are so smart that we can create things that we can make the rest of the planet conform to. We draw boundaries around property, around our municipalities, around our provinces, around our countries. These are human creations, and boy, do we take them seriously. I mean, we will go to war, we will kill and die to protect these borders. Well, guess what? Nature doesn't give a shit about human borders. You know, do you think a grizzly bear comes to the border with the United States and says, oh, I can't go any further, I'm a Canadian bear. What about migrating salmon or birds or insects? Nature couldn't care less about human boundaries. But we want to shoehorn nature into our boundaries. And then we do things like we create economies, you know, and we forget what is the very source of the word economics. It's ecos. It's a Greek word meaning household or domain. Economics is the management of our home. Ecology is the study of our home. Now, ecologists try to determine what are the, the rules, the conditions of sustainability. Now, I would have thought anybody would say, Jesus, what are those ecologists finding out? Because we've got to conform to whatever those rules and those conditions are. If we don't, we screw up sustainability. But no, we elevate the economy above ecology. We have a prime minister who for five years has said, we can't afford to do anything about climate change. It'll destroy the economy. Wait a minute. The economy is a human-created structure. You, the, the whole reason why things like Kyoto and the Copenhagen meetings fail is at Copenhagen, we had 192 nations, each with their own national boundaries, each with their own economic priorities trying to deal with the atmosphere that doesn't care about our economies or our boundaries. And we want to shoehorn nature into our agenda. And that's the problem here. If you have a government that's elected whose political basis is dependent on economics, a kind of economics, which essentially regards nature as an opportunity for, to feed the economy, but doesn't see that nature is the very source of our survival, and that protecting nature should be our highest priority, then we're doomed. And what protection of an area like the Peel represents is an opportunity to see Jesus, you know, that represents an acknowledgement that we need these areas because our survival depends on it. You see, I've been now for a number of years debating the whole issue of what's going on with the environmental movement. We've been losing big time for the last 20 years. Very, very successful in the first 20 years after Rachel Carson. You know, we the setting up departments of the environment. We've got laws for clean air, clean water, endangered species, millions of acres of parks protected. But we're losing big time. Why? Because we still didn't get the real message. We are animals. And as animals, if we don't have clean air, clean water, clean soil, we're hooped. And so everything ought to be predicated on the fact that our highest priority as a government, as an organization, is to protect the very life support systems of the planet. Then we say, hmm, how do we make, how do we create an economy based on protecting those things? And that's the shift that's needed. So long as the Yukon government or the BC government or the Canadian government thinks the economy is the highest priority, then everything else must be subordinate to that. We're hooped. It's just, it's just wrong. It's, it's destructive.